about this love. About this about this love. About 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 this love. Love 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 love. How you guys doing today? You tuning into About This Love podcast with myself, Dale, and my wife Sherelle. Say what's up. What's up, peoples? How everybody doing? Hope you guys are having a good day. I know. I know. Last week we um we were we were in a collective podcast with a, a friend of ours um, who hosts um, our podcast on his site. It's um it's, it's called Dive Media. Uh, for, I mean, I, those who tune into it, I, I know you know it's Dive Media, but it was a, basically a, a plethora of um, all the podcasts that he um, that he hosts. Um, and, and, and that he has, um, under dive media, which is, you know, about this love is wonder, one of the ones that fall under, um, under dive media. We also fall under, um, MD, MD LLC as well, but we definitely fall under, um, dive media. And I just wanted to have a discussion about the current condition of our country as it relates to the, uh, treatment of, of African Americans. Um, for those who didn't, um, listen to that, definitely go back and listen to that one. This week, we kind of wanted to kind of come with something like, um, there will be a part two, probably what, probably next week, um, of, of that discussion from, with, with Dive Media as well. But for this week, we just kind of wanted to lighten the load a little bit and, you know, kind of get back to our norm, normal, um, schedule, um, you know, and then next week we're going to interrupt your lives again. <laughs> but, um, interrupt their lives with what? Another riot? <laughs> nah, nah. And it's not really interrupting because, um, I feel like it's, it's discussion, it's the discussions that definitely need to be had, you know, in our country. And I think that when you have, those kind of conversations, it makes people feel uncomfortable because one of the things that, you know, and we discussed this, we discussed this in the podcast as well last week is that one of the things that America has to do is actually, it has to admit the fact that, you know, the treatment of African Americans in, in this country, it's not really up, up to snuff. You know, it's, it's very, it's very poor. Um, and, you know, since the time African Americans have arrived in America from the, t- from the, from now, it's always been some type of, discrimination or harsh treatment towards us as a people. So, um, like, like I said, tune into that one. It came out last week. Um, it's a dive media round table is what it's titled, um, part one or, or this one. And, um, next week after this, after this episode, next week will be, be, um, part two to, to that discussion. But for today, we wanted to kind of come with talking about attributes or, um, I guess what kind of character should, should you look for in a person that you're considering, um, you know, to be married to, um, what type of character or characteristics? Um, Cause they could be a character. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean, I mean both characteristics and, and just, you know, just the, I guess the nature of the character, like what should you look for in a spouse? And, and, and the reason I wanted to do this podcast, I was telling my wife that, um, a buddy of mine, um, a guy that I know, he actually came to me. Um, he had been dating for somebody, um, now for like, uh, I'll say, I'll say about six months. And he actually came to me and was like, you know, I, I, I want to buy the ring, you know, for this young lady. And uh, I really feel like she's the one. And he just began to ask me, you know, how did you know, you know, when, when your wife was the one and just, you know, what did you look for? And just it was asking me for advice. And I mean, um, oftentimes, like when people ask you questions, sometimes I think it kind of catches you off guard in the sense that my mind was somewhere else. So, so I, I kind of had to shift and focus on what he was asking me and kind of just like really, really think about the questions that I know, you know, what it was, you know. Um, So, uh, you know, that we talked about first was I, I said, um. One of the things that I feel like oftentimes people don't do when they're getting into a relationship with somebody that's leading to marriage is that they don't ask enough questions. I was like, you know, I know people always be like, well, you know, let, let the past in the past. I said, and that's true to an extent. I said, but don't be foolish enough to think that um, whatever your girlfriend, you know, went through in her past, whether it's dating or, you know, sexual abuse, sexual assault or, you know, molestation or just uh, um, Any physical, type of just assault. physical abuse. Period. I said, you know, I said, so, you know, he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I, really, I really didn't think about that. I really didn't think to ask some kind of questions. I said, yeah, I said, you have to. I said, because, you know, when you, when you get in a relationship that leads to marriage, a lot of that, a lot of that stuff will come, will come out in marriage and you won't know why. I said, so at least if you ask the questions now and even, even if you guys touch on it briefly, at least in marriage, if things come up, at least you'll know what it is and it, it enables you to be more, more, gracious towards your spouse because you know there's some underlying conditions there from, from from the past and i mean i just i just told him to just ask questions man ask questions ask questions ask questions ask questions but what and, type of questions though you can say ask questions but i could ask you like what you drink today or you know what you what did you eat this morning or what are you thinking about and you know that could that could be very vague people like people who are in relationships now they think they're asking questions 
but it's not the right question. So, like, do you have, like, maybe three of the right questions that you can give someone to ask, like some foundational things just to get the conversation going? I mean, I mean, well, one of the things we talked about was I was I said I said um, as it relates to finances, I said, you know, how do you how do you guys how do you guys view, view your finances? You know, I said, um, there's. Are you, will you guys be joining bank accounts? Will you guys, you know, not be joining bank accounts? You know, does she like um, fine and expensive things, cars, clothes? You know, uh, how does she feel, you know, about about, about children, you know, about oh, your that's children? That's a big thing. You know, how does she, how does she feel about having to, 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 to relocate if that was ever an option? Um, do you guys have the same moral beliefs, you know, as it relates to, like, just your religion? You know, do you guys believe in the same thing? Because if you, you don't, that in itself could could bring about a, a, a attention in a marriage because, you know, you're trying to bring your children up in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they, they try to bring them up in, in the way of Allah and Muhammad. It's, it's like just, just things that people don't really think about. And, and oftentimes it's, it's interesting because as me, as him and I talked, like he actually had acknowledged that, you know, these are actually things that, you know, I, I didn't really think about. And oftentimes, to be honest, we don't, we don't really think it, that we, we have to like, and no one tells us that to ask this kind of question. We kind of just kind of go into a situation. We're really nearly kind of winging it, you know, kind of doing it as, as, as we go along until, you know, you get married and you've been married now for six, seven months to a year, two years and problems begin to arise. And you're like, where does stuff come from? It's like, well, they've always been there, you know? They've always been there. You were just, you know, uh, what's that song by um, Anita Baker? Uh, Captured in the Retro of Love. Captured. <laughs> you be making stuff up. Oh, <laughs> my God. Captured in the Rapture of Love. No, no. Caught up in the Rapture of Love. You was close, but that wasn't it. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, it's something we had said previously, just asking those questions, how important it is. I know that, man, when you and I were, like, courting one another, I felt like you were just... Question after question after question after thing. And, well, what you think about this? I'm like, you know, we already talked about this, right? But, I mean, for one thing, it's almost like, you know how you go through the interview process. You don't just get one interview. You know, they bring you back. And not to say that you're interviewing, like, five, ten women, men to see if, you know, they're the one. But if you're dating someone, you're considering marriage. And it's like, okay, Not that, oh, well, are you going to be in it to win it? Are you going to be in it, you know, for love? And am I going to be in it for love? But more so of, um, hey, you know, you brought up that you don't really have a relationship with your mother. Do you think that, you know, that will affect how you see me kind of thing? And it's not for you to, like, be someone shrink, but it's almost like, you know, in marriage, I don't feel like there should be any deal breakers because the Lord can reconcile anything, but at the same time, that, that's that's too vague of a statement to make. Uh, what that that there shouldn't be any deal breakers. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. Because I mean, what if what if somebody you marrying into multiple partners? But and you're but, not? but here's the thing, that's, that's though. A deal breaker. But here's the thing, though. But you're but you're saying you're already married. But what I'm saying is, if you are already married. Like, I'm coming to a place where I'm feeling like there shouldn't be any deal breakers. Now, that's not, yes, it's a very vague statement, but I'm saying it as to say, like, if you do the prep work before you get married and then things start to come up, like, anything could come up and you can just walk away, like... You know, I mean, and it's almost because you felt like you didn't know what you were getting yourself into. You weren't prepared. Like a few years ago, someone had asked me, like, are you sure that you're going to be with your husband for the rest of your life? Like, how do you know? And on one hand, it's like, you know, I don't know. But on another hand, I'm like, well, you know, if I believe that the Lord had put this marriage together then I'm, I I believe the Lord will keep us together if we also do the work, you know? Yeah, yeah, face without work is dead. And, and I'm yeah. saying that because it's like, because one, one of the things that I said to him is, is um, I, was, I, I told him that, you know, me and my wife, we, we do counseling. Um, I said, nothing n- nothing is wrong with our marriage. We just do counseling. I was like... Well, we like, receive counseling. Yeah, we receive, we receive, I'm sorry, yeah, we receive counseling. And I was like, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. I said, oftentimes, it's just, it's, it's just... Pre- Preventative maintenance, you know what I'm saying, um, and not not to say that that it can always prevent everything because some things is going to come up that that's going to be kind of kind of um it's going to be a, it's going to be a, difficult a struggle and a challenge for you to deal with. I said, but just you know, I said, you know, how does your, how how does your you know lady feel about that? How does she feel about getting getting counseling? You know what I'm saying? Because oftentimes 
people get married and their mentality is I don't want, I don't want nobody, you know, I don't want nobody, you know, up in my marriage, up, up in my business. It's like, well, brother and sister, if you get to a place in your marriage where you, you hit a roadblock or a fork in the road, somebody gonna have to, somebody gonna have to be, somebody's gonna have to be in your business if you want it, if you want your marriage to survive and, and, and to thrive. But if you don't, then, Hey man, do what you do, you know. Well, I would say somebody, not just anybody, because somebody could be in your marriage, and it's like, yeah, I got a, I got another person on the side, and they in my marriage, and my marriage is working because I'm they do their thing. Like some, I understand that, but I just wanna, I wanna just clear that up because, you know, I know what you mean, but the listeners may not know what you mean. You know what I'm saying, Dale? Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I definitely agree with that. There was one thing I wanted to bring up when you did say you wanted to um, kind of touch on what to look for when dating. Um, and we've, like I said, I'm sure we've previously, previously talked about this. You know how people have their list of things that they want in a spouse and that they want. I think that you also need to be realistic with the other person about that. You know what I'm saying? And and I say that because it's almost like your expectations of marriage, it has been shaped and framed by your parents, your, you know, siblings, your aunts and uncles, um, your coworkers, TV, that has shaped your idea of marriage, your idea of relationships and how that's supposed to work and how that functions. Because, you know, where else are you looking at relationships? Why else do you want to be married unless you've seen it somewhere and you, you've been interested in wanting to take that next step with someone. And, um, you know, you have to kind of put out there, okay, this is my idea of marriage. I know one thing Dell and I did when we first got married, I think it was like day one after the wedding, we got, you know, back to the apartment. And I remember you were playing a video game and I was like, hey, Dale, like, let's talk. We need to talk. And you were like, all right, let's just talk. And so I pulled out like a pen and paper and I was like, okay, so what is your expectations of me? And <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing at it now because... Man, like I was so you could just tell how young and new and fresh, you know, I was in marriage because I'm just like, OK, do you want me to, you know, wash the dishes by the time you come home? And do you want me to have the house clean? And do you want me to, you know, do this and that? But really what I was trying to show Dale is, you know, that I was open to his idea of a wife and you know, sometimes you realize that they don't even know what that is because, like, remember, Dale, you were like, oh, I don't know. That's cool. You know, that's cool. Like, yeah. and I was just kind of like, that's cool. No, this is serious. Like, I've, you know, everyone has told me how serious marriage is, and it is serious. Um, I mean, you have to take it seriously. Your commitment has to be, you know, it has to mean something. And so for it to be meaningful, for your marriage to be meaningful, for your relationship to um, last and have that good solid foundation I think in your heart you have to make sure that that means something to you and, you know it's it's interesting because um, I feel like with a lot of things going on in the world right now me in specific like talking about like the dating scene and and people wanting sugar mamas and sugar daddies. I think I think that's actually opened the um the kind of the the gates the the airwaves for people that people really want people want like real genuine love. But I think also because it's funny because one of the things that one of the things that came up in conversation was that like I want a woman that that can bring something to the table as well financially and not just somebody that's looking to. Um, marry me because of you know the job title that I hold, or which is which is which is very valid because I, I know in the past you've shown me videos of people talking about women talking about they they, they want a guy and he got to make six figures and he got to pay for oh her rent gosh. and yeah. got to pay for her car note. And I'm saying to myself like, j- just the mentality. It's like people. It's coming. It's coming to the point where people are like, man, look, man. I just want because everybody in the world playing games and and women basically selling. Their vagina and, and I mean, basically, I mean, it's, it's, it's what you're doing. And, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to go on a tangent. It's, that's not my point. But my point is, people just come. People come to the point where they like, look, man, I just want a, a woman or a guy that's gonna be my friend, be loyal, be loyal and committed to me, and bring something to the table. And that's all I want. You know, I, I want to marry her. Of course, they want more, but they like that's the basic foundational things that they want: love me, be faithful, and loyal to me. You know, bring something to the table and let's just build, you know, build a life and have a family, you know. And I think that what's open that what's open that up is, the, like I said, the world people are people are just tired, man. People are just tired. People are tired of chasing 
booty in the club or, or, or whatever and you being with somebody and they just want you to pay all the bills and the only thing that they think they're going to do is just lay, lay and open their legs. It's like, dude, no, 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 no. I, you know, I, I want more than that. I want somebody that's going to bring something of equal value to the table and something of equal value to the table doesn't, it doesn't have to necessarily be a paycheck or, or, or money, but it has, it, cause that was something that came up too. We were talking about, we was like, well, when you say bring something to the table, you talking about money? He said, no, I'm not, not necessarily. I mean, I would like that. Yes. But just a woman who has substance, you know, who has substance, who has goals, who has dreams. She's not, she's just not sitting home all day um, on watching reality TV or just, on social media all day, she's planning. She she got plans for her business, you know, her her goals um to better for our family, family. Yeah. you know, like you know, so you were just something of substance, like just today, like. And my wife would tell you because I'm my wife. She'll, sometimes she'll she'll um she'll ask me, well, you, you know, so and so, and them got married. Talking about celebrities, I'm like, no, nah, I don't I, I I don't know who those bamas are. I don't I don't follow celebrities. I don't I don't follow them. I don't, I don't know who they are. I might I, I may I may know them if I see them far as their, their face but i don't i don't follow that stuff i don't, I don't, I don't know i don't follow that stuff I, I i it's too much it's too much time it's i'm too busy during the day to really pay attention to that stuff and, and, and when, I'm, when, when i'm out working i spend time with my you know our wife building our family or doing a podcast or just or, or with my children i don't have time to be on social media all day or watch reality tv that's fake i don't i don't, I don't, I don't have time for that you, know? you don't want to watch the fake reality, the fake news, nah, fake drama, <laughs> fake Mamas drama. Creating, Mamas, create, Mamas creating fake drama. So, I'm. I guess on one note, I'm kind of glad that people are being players and women selling. They, I'm, I'm glad Wait, you're glad that no, they're doing that. I'm glad because it's. I'm not glad, but I'm saying it's. It's opening the door for people who want for people who are tired of of that type of lifestyle and that mentality and they want something real. Well, hold on. Let me say this. I I think that there is a good chunk, like there's a good chunk of people who are actually out there dating around, you know, not trying to settle down because, and every time I see this post online, I just cringe because it's like, you know, a girl dancing up on a guy and the caption is like, yeah, this is going to be me this summer. And, you know, this is somebody's son. And I mean, if y'all have seen that post on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever, y'all know what I'm talking about. And I mean, you know, like hot girl summer it's going to be a hot girl summer or whatever. And it kind of disappointed me because, well, one, I have a son. And I'm just like, man, I would want someone to look at my son as if he was somebody to them, as if he meant something to, you know, whoever the young lady is. But I think that there's a level of fear that people have where they don't want to commit. They don't want to get, um, they don't want to be serious with, you know, another male or another female. They, they don't. And it's because it's like, well, if I get serious, you might cheat. And, or if I want to get married, then, you know, you might do this and that, or we might end up, breaking up or we might end up divorcing and then I might as well not have done it at all. And it's like, well, on one hand, yes, be cautious and no, you know, you can't predict the future, but there are some things, you know, to build up that you can do to build up your relationship, but you cannot do it alone. Like one person cannot be all in it. When you and I deal were first, like, you know, hanging around each other, someone told me, I think that a marriage will only work if the male, if the man loves the woman more. And I'm like, that is so not true because if you just like love on a woman and you're not getting anything in return, you're going to feel used, you know? And it's almost like no one wants to feel used. And I mean, some people, if they do want to be used, (laughs) yeah, some people like being used. They do. But I mean, that's that codependent relationship it's not healthy and that stems from that stems from something and not to say you won't feel used in your marriage it's not to say that you won't feel let down or hurt ever in your marriage because you're growing through things you know but it's still like i hate to say the more you know but it's like yeah don't go into a relationship blind you know we gave the example a couple podcasts back where it was almost like you know, because you're going, you're going off of your emotions and off of your lust that it's like, yeah, you know, let's run off to the courthouse right now and get married because I love you so much and you love me and this is going to be great forever. But it's kind of like, yeah, you find out later on that that person has some skeletons in the closet 
And they're really a crappy person because they don't, you know, they're very selfish and they don't care, you know, about you. They care about the title of being married. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean and, and like I said, um, um, oftentimes, you know, because I know one of our one of our, our previous podcasts, we talked about how oftentimes people just kind of get into relationships with first it's starting with what you, you know, old school 90s, you know, a booty call and then they try to develop into something serious. but. I'm I'm not really keen to that because it's like the foundation of your relationship was based off of sex. I mean, I'm not saying it can't work. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it, I'm sure it could work. I'm sure it does work. But the reality of it is, how much trust do you have in a person when the reality of your relationship was only about sex? Because then you gotta wonder, well, who else was he or she sleeping with besides me? Or yeah. or if you do know, but then it's like, well, yeah, I'm going to cut this person and cut that person off just to be with you because I'm feeling you. I think it's almost like, you know, I think everyone gets to a point where they're questioning, why do you want to be with me? And if you tell me because of the time that we've spent together, it's like, yeah, and what else? I mean, as a female, as a woman, it's like, yeah, and what else? What else do you love about me? Like, what sets me apart? Kind of like Rihanna's old song from back in the day. I want you to make me feel like I'm the only girl in the world. You know what I'm saying? And it's almost like, yeah, there could be other, like more, uh, more beautiful girl somewhere or in a different country or, you know, but it's almost like I, I want to trust that if we were to leave outside of our home, outside of, you know, our walls, you're not going to be looking anywhere else. And especially if that if sex is the, you know, bottom line of your relationship and it, you hadn't built up anything else other than time spent together. Because, yes, time spent, you know, that does add to it. But it's almost it like depends on what y'all doing. I mean, exactly. You just, you just spend time with somebody and y'all not talk. I just watch movies. Yeah. Y'all are you intentional? Games, yes. Just have sex. I mean, time's. Time spent together isn't, it doesn't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, absolutely. It, it doesn't mean anything, you know, because we could be spending time together watching a movie and, you know, you and I have had to be cautious of that too. We're sitting in the living room, you know, you get off work and it's like, yeah, let's watch a movie. And then a few days later, you know, I could be upset because I'm like, man, I just feel like we hadn't talked. Like, what's on your mind? What's on your heart? Like, like, what you thinking about, you know, tell me, like, open up to me, share with me. And you'll oftentimes find that people don't naturally do that. Like, they don't think about it they because they don't know how to. We get they don't know how to. They're so like we can let so much of everything else around us kind of consume our thoughts, consume our time, really, like our cell phones, um, the television, other people. I know I have a it's a good and a bad habit, you know, with the virus and everything going on. I call my family like several times a day on duo and I have to be mindful. Um, an older couple actually has suggested like when, you know, when Dale goes to bed because we have different schedules because, you know, his work schedule changes from time to time. And so um, I just got used to, you know, your older schedule, Dale. And so, but this older couple told me like, you know, when your husband goes to bed, go to bed with him that would make a world of a difference with you all's intimacy. And I was just like, wait, what? And so they were like, no, lay down with him, go to bed with him. And I'm just like, well, that just sounds so crazy. He goes to sleep at nine. That's so early, you know, but then I I made a conscious effort to, okay, I'm not going to reply back, you know, to anyone, you know, after nine, we were going to lay down. And I felt like we've had more conversation um, I've been able to engage him more, like, you know, to see what's on his heart, how his day really went, because everything's settled. The kids are, you know, put to bed. The kids are, they're settled. Are, we're settled. We've showered and calmed down for the whole day. And we're just winding down. And I'm just like, I appreciate that time so much more. So it's almost like when you're, when you are, you know, kind of engaging someone to, you know, court them, to move on to marriage, to date them, to move on to marriage, it's like, okay, you know what? I'm getting serious. Like, we're getting serious. In our time together, like, even though we're going out on dates, do we have our cell phones up the whole time? Are we just taking pictures? I mean, am I worried about us looking yeah. cute together versus us, you know, really building something or going towards something? Yeah, it's interesting because the other day we, we were on the, um, well, it was last night we were on the phone 
with um the couple that um that 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 counseled us um and one of the things that he said was that um it's two things he said that one when him and his wife were eating dinner they made it a a, a point to not to have their phones out mm. um the cell phones out he said also you know when whenever we're having a conversation we make it a point not to have our cell phones around as well because I mean you gotta think about it especially for people looking to get married it's like Oftentimes, you know, when you're married, people would always tell us you're setting the foundation for your marriage. And if the foundation of your marriage is when, you're, when your husband and or wife is talking, you on a cell phone scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever all the social media sites that, 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 that is out there, what you're actually what you're actually doing is you're being dishonorable. Because, I mean, yes, you hear what they're saying, but you may not get the opportunity to really listen to their heart. And the tone and what and what they're saying. So you know, even with us, you know, we 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 got to get better at that as well. You know, I mean, I, I think we, I think I think we do it. We we do it more now. Like like if um if I realize she's talking to me, I put my phone down, and vice versa, she put her phone down. Just like you know, because sometimes they start talking to you, especially my wife, and you like, well, are we having a conversation Wait, right now? Like, they as in women? No, like- I'm saying yeah, women like women. <laughs> so we just start talking out of nowhere. I mean, sometimes it seems that way. Yeah. Oh, no, oh I, I, well, that's true. What it is, I, what it is, I think is that as a people or as a woman, people, men, you try to you have a conversation in your head, and then you have it with a person, not realizing that they're not in your head. So to you, the conversation may, may have started five minutes ago in your head, and then you verbally start talking about it, and it comes out. You're like, wait a minute, what, what, what's, what's going on? Like, you know, where'd that come from? Yeah, where'd that come from? You know, so um, you know, characteristics. You know, um, when looking looking to marry somebody or looking to somebody who could be a potential spouse, I would just say, you know, really, really um, ask a lot of questions um, about them. What kind of things are they into? Their family. Family. What kind of things have they been into? Um, Just past hurts. um, And just really try to be honest. Like, I would say try to set the atmosphere or, or set the tone so that they can be vulnerable, you know, because oftentimes, you know, like you wouldn't be, you wouldn't want to be at a restaurant somewhere where it's loud. Well, I guess you can't now because COVID nineteen. But if before, even before that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be in a restaurant somewhere, um, you know, where it's pretty loud or where people, can, other people can hear what you're saying. You want to be in in an in, 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 in intimate setting, you know. So I mean, you can still go to parks and and talk. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah of course. Yeah, I mean. Oh, I get what you're saying. Like, if you're at a restaurant and it's loud and you're shouting, you really wouldn't want to tell, or like... Or if you're around the people, people might, might, might be hesitant to really be like, you know, my past, you know, my uncle, you know, is my, blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, or I, I, as a kid, I was, I was beat. You know, it's like, you know, just... Mm. just the, the atmosphere um, uh, matters a lot. And I feel like the atmosphere can can create that level of, of vulnerability that you may want to get from the person that you're looking to be married to um and, and um we also we also intend on uh, um doing you know uh, uh, some series about dating and um i feel like i feel like we've done some we, we've done them in, in the past but we you know just as we begin to engage people everyday life i feel like more and more conversations are are being um are being coming before us and people are asking us questions you know and want us to touch on things so it's like hey let's kind of let's kind of revisit this topic or that topic that we've did in the past with revisit it in a different light, you know what I'm saying, for for those, you know, who've been rocking with us for a while, you know. Thank you for listening to our, our podcast. Like I said, do remember that our podcast can be found anywhere that you can find podcasts, you know. Um, also follow us on Instagram, About This Love, Facebook, About This Love, and YouTube, About This Love. Thank, thank you for rocking with us. Until next time, peace. Oh, 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 oh,